Short Stand YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be discussing convergence, what it is and how you can check if you've converged. So let's begin. But before I introduce convergence, we need to make sure that we're familiar with the central limit theorem. The law of large numbers says that the mean of a large sample xn is close to the expectation value. But this isn't enough to help us approximate probability statements about xn. For this, we need the central limit theorem. Let's imagine that you have an unbiased coin. If we flip the coin 10 times, do we expect to get five heads and five tails? The answer is no. Let's say heads is zero and tails is one, then the coin toss can be represented as a binomial distribution with probability 0.5. But the mean of the tosses may not be 0.5 as expected. But the more times we flip it, the closer we are to get 50% proportion landing on heads. The central limit theorem says that with sufficiently large random and independent samples, the distribution of the sample means will be approximately normally distributed, centered on the expectation value with a standard deviation equal to the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. This can be demonstrated for the samples drawn from, for example, the Poisson and exponential distributions. For large numbers of large sample sizes, the distribution of the sample means is consistent with the Gaussian approximation. Okay, so now moving on to convergence. STAN is a Markov chain Monte Carlo sampler, or MCMC for short. It's a method to draw samples from the posterior distribution, and it's useful when it's non-trivial to make independent draws. MCMC relies on the MCMC central limit theorem to hold, i.e. that the sample mean taken from the MCMC, the posterior marginal expectation, should be normally distributed, in which case, in theory, MCMC can then be proven to converge to the target distribution, the true posterior distribution, as the number of draws approaches infinity. In practice, however, we are limited on the number of draws that can be made, and therefore we need to monitor the samples for convergence. Using MCMC introduces problems that are not found in independent sample Monte Carlo methods. How can we determine when a randomly initialized Markov chain has converged to the target distribution and is unbiased? And additionally, how can we ensure that the samples within a chain are not correlated, such to avoid invalidating the central limit theorem? STAN includes posterior analysis tools such as summary statistics and diagnostics that can help you determine whether or not you have actually reached convergence. As an example, let's look at the eight schools dataset from section 5.5 of Gauman et al. 2003. Here we have J equals eight schools that are used in a study to see the effectiveness of coaching on the improvement of student performance in an aptitude test. Each school has an estimated treatment effect Y and a standard error on the effect estimate sigma. The model is a hierarchical model. We're not going to be discussing hierarchical models in this video, so I won't go into the detail, but as usual, you have three blocks, a data block with the number of schools, the estimated treatment effects, and error on those estimates, a parameters block with the parameters of interest, in this case, the true treatment effect of each individual school and the population treatment effect across all of the schools and its scale. Lastly, the model block defines the prior on the parameters and the likelihood. One way to reassure about the convergence is to run multiple chains with different starting points and monitoring the distributions to see if they are similar. So let's fit the model with STAN using 20 iterations, half of which will be used for warm-up and four chains. 
we can then visualize the samples in the population treatment effect mu and scale tau. Notice how each chain starts at a different location in the parameter space. Here, the chains have not yet converged to the target distributions. The distributions of the four chains are different. And as you might have expected, for any finite number of draws, there will always be some residual effect of the initial state. It's common practice to discard the initial few iterations from the sample to improve accuracy. This is called the burn-in. However, in the STAM warm-up iterations are not a typical burn-in because they are used to tune the parameters of the algorithm and must be discarded. After warm-up, convergence of the Markov chain should be relatively insensitive to the starting point. This helps to ensure that the Markov chain is geometrically ergodic, which is a critical property if we want a central limit theorem to hold for approximate posterior expectations. The sample paths of chains can be visually inspected using trace blocks. Looking at the trace blocks of the 20 iterations, where 10 are actually used, you can see that the four chains are not well mixed. In this case, when we increase the number of iterations, the mixing will improve. However, if the number of parameters is very large, then it's not very efficient to check every single trace plot. Ideally, you want a single summary statistic to tell you if you've converged. R hat is a scalar quantity that is defined for each parameter as the pooled variance of that parameter from all the chains combined divided by the mean variances of each individual chain. If the samples have mixed well, then the chains should follow the same distribution, and R hat should be 1. If the samples have not mixed well, then the variance of the combined chains will be larger than the variance of each individual chain, and R hat will be greater than 1. Generally, we're looking for a value of R hat less than 1.1. We know, however, that R hat can fail, and also that other variations of the classical R hat exist, so you should be aware of which R hat you're using. Stan uses the split R hat statistic that also takes into account the distributions at the start and at the end of a chain, making it more robust to temporal features. In general, you should check that your parameters satisfy the R hat criteria. These values are given at the last column when you print the fit. Another scalar quantity that is estimated by Stan is the effective sample size for each parameter. The effective sample size is essentially the number of independent samples as determined from the amount of increase in uncertainty on posterior estimates due to correlated or even anti-correlated samples. Recall that the number of independent draws is important in the central limit theorem and hence also in the MCMC central limit theorem. The true effective sample size is non-trivial to compute, but Stan implements an estimator of the effective sample size. The ratio of effective samples to total iterations should be greater than 0.01, otherwise the samples may be biased and the true effective sample size overestimated. The number of effective samples of each parameter is the second to last column when you print the fit. Note that when you ran the fit, warnings appeared about bulk underscore ESS and tail underscore ESS. These are measures of the effective sample size for the bulk and tail of the posteriors respectively and can be accessed with the monitor function. An ESS over 100 per chain is considered good and can be improved by running longer iterations and thinning the chains, essentially throwing away correlated samples to reduce the autocorrelation. When we use a larger number of iterations, the ESS errors may disappear. 
The last statistic that we'll talk about in this video is divergences. The Stan MCMC sampler is an implementation of Hamiltonian Monte Carlo algorithm that calculates the derivatives of the posterior density function to generate efficient samples. These samples are defined by the path of a fictitious particle that explores a phase space subject to Hamiltonian dynamics. The Hamiltonian is the sum of the potential energy and kinetic energy of the system, and it should be conserved. However, sometimes it isn't. If it strays too far, we call it a divergence. Essentially, it indicates regions of high curvature in the posterior that are difficult to explore. The divergence warnings are in Stan Sampler to diagnose the sampler's inability to follow the curvature in the posterior and provide independent confirmation that Stan Sampler cannot fit the model as specified. We can plot the samples using the pairs plot to see where the divergences are occurring in parameter space. Here we see the majority of divergences are occurring at low values of tau. Sometimes divergences can be false positives and one potential solution to reduce these divergences is to use a smaller step size, eta, equivalent to a larger dap delta. The smaller the step size, the more accurate the trajectory and the less likely it will be mislabeled as a divergence. The number of divergences should vanish as ADAP delta goes to 1. Here, since the number of divergences is not decreasing with the increase of ADAP delta, geometric ergodicity is not satisfied. We need to reparameterize the model or change the priors. With the new reparameterized model combined with a higher ADAP delta, our fit has no divergences, large numbers of effective samples across all parameters, and R hat less than 1.1. There is no 100% guarantee that the model is completely converged, but these checks can help you be confident that it is. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll link the code and additional reading material below. If you felt that this was useful and you would like to support Stan to contribute making more videos just like this one, please consider making a donation in the link below, giving us a like, a share, or just subscribing. Mm -hmm.